local marketing guide, product and food reviews, the good, the not so good, and the downright horrible. I'm Kari. We are here at the SLV Apothecary uh, here in Alamosa in the San Luis Valley, Colorado. Um, if you're not familiar, uh, it's just a step away from the sand dunes. Um, and uh, we have a beautiful, uh, about a, a mile away from the shop, we have a beautiful farm, a community farm called the Rio Grande Farm Park where we grow um, vegetables. I grow medicinal herbs on a quarter of an acre. And from my herbs, I make uh, a bunch of different medicine products. Um, we have everything from tinctures to herbal tea blends and salves, um, a bunch of other local vendors as well. We have a tumbleweed local bread, which is amazing. They use an artisan uh, local wheat um, it, with a sourdough. Uh, sourdough method. Uh, we also have uh, Dove Herbal Consulting, Danielle, who offers uh, herbal consulting for people, and um, we make custom teas uh, with all of our local herbs. We have a pretty good selection of local herbs, and then we also have uh, some non-local herbs that we um, that we purchase, and then resell uh, the ones that we can't grow or if we can't grow enough of it so yeah so <clears throat> it's uh it's getting ready to grow right the growing season yeah april is upon us um i thought today we'd focus on spring matters and seeds so um i know art you were saying that you tell a lot of your friends you know the importance of heirloom seeds so what do you tell your friends well you know because i'm not a doctor i haven't you know got any degrees so i have to give disclaimers but i have engaged in the process of inquiry and done my investigations and i know some things and a few people know but those who know don't tell those who tell don't know type thing but there's always an exception to the rule and that's why we're here <laughs> and so seeds are very important because most seeds today are either hybrid or genetically modified. It's hard to find good God-made heirloom seeds. Now what's the difference? Well, genetically, they're, uh, they're corrupt. You know, I'm giving my opinion here. And first of all, let me put it like this. If a human being can't reproduce, there's something wrong with the human being, right? They're like the, the sterilized. Yeah, your son is yeah. sterile, your daughter is sterile. Like it's not good. And if a seed is hybrid or GMO, its ability to reproduce has been impaired right. dramatically. Right. And you can Google that. Ask a doctor. Ask you know whoever. Like a hybrid squash, for instance. Um, sometimes you'll get the plant and you'll think and you'll garden all year. You'll water it and it won't produce. Another thing that will happen is it can be like, it will produce like a weird, unedible, deformed kind of... Monstrosity. Yeah, like Franken squash. Yeah, because, and I didn't know about, like, even like being a gardener, I didn't know a lot about heirloom seeds and yeah. what. Um, I think one thing that's really important to note and, and know about and research is um, open pollinated seeds. Um, so if you are buying seeds, uh, even if it's organic, a lot of times it can say F1. So if it says F1 on the, on the end of a variety, for instance, it'll say acorn squash F1. F1 means it's hybrid. So it's, it's something just to know. And, and like we we're saying, like, it's hard because then, then it impairs you to, to collect your own seeds. And that takes away a lot of your liberty because then you're having to buy seeds all the time. Mm. Um, so I, it's so valuable to have A, plants that produce seeds yeah. that are viable, you know, so that we can collect our seeds because then we're creating generations and generations 
of better genetics that that plant is now adapted to this region, to this climate, to this sunshine, blah, 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 blah. So... Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, like, for, for example, it's coriander, right? Yep, that one is coriander, so cilantro. Yeah, you got something like this, you know, you got all the health benefits of the seed, you know, the plant, you know, detoxing, dude, tastes amazing, good spice, good herb, mm -hmm. my it, head. It pulls heavy metals out of your body. And, I mean, so, and if it's, you know, genetically pure, you know, mm -hmm. why would you want something from Ace Hardware, Monsanto, mm -hmm. it's just, you know. Yeah. That you're going to have to go buy anyway next year. Right, and and then like when you're when you're not collecting your seeds or not buying local seeds, you're getting some from the East Coast, from all over the world, so they're not adapted to your environment, to their region. Not to say that you can't grow them, you can still, but it's just good, you know, it's just good measure if if you can or if you have the ability to buy local seeds within your region, it's a really good thing to do. Yeah. yeah, and then what would we got here? What seeds? So we have these. So I have I brought a couple that we sell from Jesus Flores, who's the manager at the farm park. So a lot of the farm park farmers grow fava beans. Um, in Spanish, they say aba beans. And the abas are absolutely beautiful. They have these white flowers with little black-eyed little black eyes on them. Um, they grow beautifully here. These have been grown here for probably five generation, five years. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, Jesus is an amazing farmer. He does he does a great job. You you you, you do have to have a certain way you dry these. You can't, usually I dry all the herbs in the dark. You don't want direct sunlight on your herbs because you lose a lot of the vitamins and minerals. You sun bleach them. But with these, you do have to dry them in the sun. Yeah. Certain beans and stuff. Um, so the other one we have by Jesus was the coriander ones, the cilantro. Um, so we talked about those. Uh, and, oh yeah, these make also good microgreens if you want to make microgreens um, and we have we're sipping on some amazing nettles fennel tea yeah, it's refreshing yeah almost like cucumber water yeah it's really it's actually kind of light yeah, you don't drink it too hot and it's just mm -hmm. so one that I I love um, is calendula resina officinalis um, calendula is a beautiful bright um, orange. Actually, if you could grab the calendula, bring it over here for us. Um, bright sun energy, and just being around the planet makes you happy. Um, you do have to harvest like in the middle of the day, so it's hot, and there's like bees around. Um, I try not to pick where the bees have gone. Oh, we got a calendula, a chamomile that made it in there. So it's a really beautiful. Um, flower and this one grows really easy. I love the seeds for this. Um, the seeds for the calendula are nice for one thing because they're larger than most herb seeds. Most herb seeds are very, very small. They got a pretty shape. Yeah, they have a beautiful shape. It's kind of this really nice curl and they're very easy to harvest. The seed heads um, after the flowers go to seed. They form these seed heads like this. You grab them, they pop right off. You get um, sometimes 20 to 50 seeds per head. So it's very seed productive. Um, I have, I kind of have hordes of it. I don't know what I did with that box. So we got a little up close of the seeds. And for anybody's garden, you know, it's a, it's a flower, you can use the petals and salads, you can make a salve, you can make um, <laughs> soaps, you can use it in teas, it's good for the lungs, it's like good for the skin, it's kind of one of those all, all around everything plants. Yeah, we uh, covered a little bit of soil, seeds, but the mm -hmm. calendula you said attracts bees. Yeah. You know, bees are really important these days because... 
you know, I walk around in stock and I see dead bees on the ground all the time. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. and my conspiracy theory friends say, oh, the chemtrail is killing the bees, whatever. Mm. But, you know, bees are important, you know. It's They're very important. And there are a lot theme. of pesticides yeah. that, that are killing them. Yeah. So I don't even think it's any kind of conspiracy suit theory. Yeah. <laughs> They're definitely being poisoned by the toxic, the toxicity of all the agriculture. Yeah, and the environment is toxic. So yeah, you know, we can get into an hour-long conversation about how the world is becoming unsustainable. Mm -hmm. But, you know, flowers like calendula help promote bees. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and just the little bit you can do, you know, we can't change the, the world, you know, instantly but we can do our part in our little world um and it, for me calendula it, it, it's one of my happy my happy herbs it just makes me happy there's some it's like it's like some people you know they look at gold and it makes them happy yeah i look at calendula <laughs> it's my gold you know yeah. <laughs> the lines calendula just put you on cloud nine yeah exactly yeah. And, and it's definitely one of the number one seed producers, so that's why I wanted to make sure to talk about that one. Another one of the top seed producers that I highly recommend growing is plantain. Um, this is not the banana-looking plantain from South America. It is plantain, the herb, also known as plantago major, is the botanical name. And this one produces thousands of seeds. They're very, very small. You're probably not going to be able to see. Um, they grow in like a rod. There's a rod that comes up and it produces thousands of seeds, at least hundreds per rod. So this is one of the rods. And then you get these very, very, very tiny. See that? That's very, very tiny seed right there. It is. So I, I use this as a cover crop. So it helps cover crops really good to, you know, help with the soil health and because you don't want bare naked soil, right? You know, I know you don't grow wheat or hemp or salad here, but, you know, while we're on the topic of soil and soil health, mm -hmm. hemp is, you know, really, really, really beneficial to the soil. Definitely. You know, so yeah. Like changing the soil over. Yeah. I mean, well, hemp is... Uh, huge producer of phytosterols, which is plant cholesterols, which helps produce testosterone, mm -hmm. you know, so it just basically beefs up your garden. Mm -hmm. So, do you grow any hemp in the garden over there? Um, we don't grow any hemp. Uh, I think, I think there is like, a, what's the word? You know, there's a stigma people see, yeah. especially like we're right on the highway, <laughs> and point. people would think that we're growing marijuana, which yeah, we're tear apart your yeah, because like we're, we're you know we have a kids' garden, it's yeah. very family oriented, so we just don't want to people because yeah. th there's a lot of people that don't understand the THC percentage. Yeah, you and know, like as beneficial as hemp is, not marijuana or cannabis, but hemp. yeah. I'm really interested in hemp as a building product. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, while we're on the topic of plants, hemp is an amazing plant. It is. You know, like the male plant is loaded with, again, phytosterols, which is just super beneficial for men and women. Mm -hmm. It's good for the environment, good for the soil, good for the plants. It keeps away pests. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it makes you wonder why is there such stigma against it? Why is there such big misunderstanding? Yeah. Because we go to school and learn stuff, <laughs> but we don't learn how to balance our checkbook yeah. or the benefits of hemp, yeah? Right, and yeah, I mean, I think part of it's misunderstanding, part of it's people don't, they're associating it with, like, politics Yeah. when it's, it's a plant, you know, and it's it grows amazingly fast. It has amazing nutrients. The seeds are really good. We do sell hemp seeds, and we do yeah. have Cloud Co. CBD.